Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome back to my art channel. First of all, I just want to apologize for the graininess of this video. Don't worry, it gets worse. <laughs> I did two jiggle pours, and this one that you're seeing right now turned out okay. The other one didn't. It's very grainy, but it's definitely, you can watch it, you'll understand what I'm doing. Today, I'm showing you guys how I do my jiggle pours, and if you've been following my art for a while, you know that I do a lot of jiggle pours. Right now, I'm layering my cup for the jiggle pour. I'm just using the Deco Art pre-mixed paints for this one because I didn't feel like mixing paint. If I were going to mix for this particular uh, method, I would advise going to Chris Jezik's YouTube. She does amazing pours, especially jiggle pours with her mix. And I think it's the same as Dan Hodge's mix. So if you go to her channel, I use that mix when I don't want cell creation. And that's what I would do if I had more time. Today, I'm just using the Deco Art Premix because they have the exact thickness I need for the result I want to go for. All of the colors and the sequence that I'm doing here, and you can kind of tell what the sequence is just by watching, all the colors will be in the description. So yes, I am doing my famous jiggle pours today. This is one of my favorite techniques and I do a lot of them on this channel. So I'm gonna finish filling up my cup and then I'll walk you guys through the process. So as I'm layering this cup, I just wanna pop in and say this, I am going from light to dark and the very first color I put in is going to be a dark color and it's gonna be the only time I use a dark color. So I put navy at the bottom and I put a little bit more than I normally would. In fact, sometimes I put even more than what you're seeing here because I want a lot of negative space. You guys know I like that spacey negative, negative space look. And then I go right to white and layer light to dark without any more, without any more navy. So the darkest I can get. And that gives such a cool effect. So as you can see, I am going at a diagonal. I am pouring in the center at a diagonal. My canvas is shaped like a diamond right now. And I am jiggling really fast and close to the paint. And that's because I really want a feathered effect. If you want an even more rounded effect, I would suggest not using a cup with a spout. So if you want thicker feather effects and really rounded edges on those, don't use the spout because the spout is gonna give you really tight feathers. If you want more rounded, I would use just a regular cup that doesn't have that pointed spout on it. Just a, just an FYI, 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 FYI for you guys. So this one, my color palette was mostly blue, as you can see. I use a little too much light blue early on, and you're gonna see that stretch out kind of a lot, um, especially based on how I tilted it. But you can also see all that navy. Do you see all that navy? That's because I put a lot on the bottom, and that creates that negative space. You can use it as a sky, or you can just use it to um, just have some extra pop, some extra contrast. So for tilting this, I don't go in circles. I usually go, you know, from diagonal to diagonal and then, you know, change it up. Go from bottom to top diagonal, left to right diagonal. You're going to get similar things based on how you tilt this. But yeah, so at this point, I'm trying to decide how much of the navy, how much negative space I want. So that little kind of flowery thing you see in the navy, you could actually tilt that off completely and have like this really cool spine-like river going down the whole thing. Today, I decided to leave just a little bit of negative space so that I could embellish it maybe with some space or some eyeballs or some flowers, probably not flowers, probably eyeballs. That's just my jam. Guys know me, I like the creepy stuff. And I also like these colors together. These are my sea slug colors, my bright blues. And yeah, you can tell, <laughs> you can tell that I used way too much of that light blue. It is kind of taken over. Had I used less, it would have been different. It would have had more colors on the side, but that's okay. And also if you use even more navy, if you put even more navy at the bottom, 
the more negative space you're going to get. There we go. It's looking pretty good. I really like that. Keep in mind that the dark colors tend to dry even darker. So the navy is going to look almost black. So if you don't want to use black because you know it might muddy up your colors or add unnecessary, unnecessary darkness to other colors, you can use a very dark blue like a navy. Especially the Deco Art Dark Blue and the Artist Loft Bright Blue. They dry very, very dark. So this, when it dries, will give the impression of a darker sky. Almost black, not quite black. But it's a good alternative if you are hesitant to use black in your paintings. And I, I really understand the more, sometimes black can take over and sometimes it can mix with the colors and not, in a not very pleasant way. So I definitely understand. All right, I am going to touch up the sides off camera. And now we have our close up. So yeah, really like this one, it's very cloudy. I really like the layered effect that it gives. So pretty. I did do a couple little just doodads, little doodles with the paint, as you probably saw while I was doing it. And I, I definitely used too much of that light blue. So if you had used less, it would have been slightly different, but you would get the same shape. I'm gonna do one more for you guys with different colors. And the reason I'm using the Deco Art Premixed for this is A, I wanted to show the process and the method and I was too lazy to mix paint today. And also it is the right thickness for this type of pour. So if you need to compare, if you want to mix your own paint and you want to compare for this method, check out the Deco Art pre-mixed paints because that's about the thickness that you want to go for so that it'll keep its lines and retain its shape and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and layer my paints. I want to pop in just one more time to explain that the last pour was a slightly, slightly wandering jiggle pour. You might not have noticed it because of the angle of the camera, but it was slightly wandering. I started, you know, towards myself. I started towards the back, towards myself, and then I moved upwards. And the reason you want to move upwards is because that's how you get that layered shape, that center going through the middle. That's how you get that. If I were to start and go downward, you would get different colors and you probably wouldn't get that layering. So if you want that, if you want that interesting snake-like shape and it's all layered at the bottom like that, always start from the bottom and then go up, like jiggle your paints upward. This one is going to be just a middle one. So I'm just going to stay in the middle the canvas is still going to be turned at an angle and diamond shape, but I'm going to stay in the middle for this one. You really want to pay attention to the last few colors that you put at the top of your cup, because those are the ones that are going to, they're going to flow downwards again towards you. And that's what's creating that line, that layered line that goes through. So you wanna pay attention to which colors you're putting at the very top. Don't put anything muddy or strange. Uh, once again, the colors I am using and the sequence will be in the description. So once again, I'm gonna go at a diagonal and now I'm just going to stay in the center and do the same jiggle pour, no wandering. And yeah, just Go as slow as you can. I kind of, it kind of started getting a little weird. So you can't, you can't quite see it from this angle. You can see the top, but the part that's being covered by the cup, that's that weird layered part. And that comes from actually those last few colors that you put at the top of the cup. And the bottom of the cup where I usually put more navy than usual, I actually put less navy in this one. I just, I did want some darkness, but I didn't want it too wide or too much. As you can see, there's a lot less in this one. That comes out of the top of the cup. It's fascinating, isn't it? Art, am I right? Wow. 
<laughs> I love how this turned out. I'm very upset that my footage came out grainy. Uh, apparently the phone I was using, which has an amazing camera, had a hardware update and it got borked. So always look back at your footage if you're filming. Interestingly, I do YouTube as a profession. I have another channel as my professional YouTube channel, so I do this as my job, and yet I still have undesirable results. So I liked this pour so much that I decided to make feathers in it. Because this jiggle pour has such a feathering effect, you can make it even more feathery by dragging you know, uh, the end of a brush or a pointy stick, if you haven't happen to have a pointy stick, you can just drag that right through the middle and it'll create even more feathers, which I think looks really good. Again, I like having that negative space at the top because I like to create things that look like caves or just little caves. I could not think of anything else, you guys. Just ca caves. I like painting caves. They, they kind of remind me of like the Aladdin Cave of Wonders, but not from the actual movie. <laughs> from the from the Sega Genesis game. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. The Sega Genesis version, the superior version, of course. Let's just nerd out for a while. Yeah, love my Sega Genesis. And these colors heavily remind me of that, that level, the Cave of Wonders level in the Sega Genesis Aladdin game. Go Google it. Pretty sure that it's, it, it's an exact match. So once again, with the tilt, I'm going top bottom and then left to right. I think with the last tilt, I went left, right, top bottom, but I cover both diagonals first and then I go to the other diagonal. Always pay attention to where the weight of your paint is, by the way. You'll, you'll tell, you can tell, trust me. You can tell where the weight is by where it's moving the fastest and the most. Oh, I just love this painting so much. I'm so glad I got it on camera. Even though it's grainy, oh, I'm so glad. So as you can see, because I used more equal amounts of paint, as opposed to the other one where again, too much light blue paint, I kind of lost it when I poured it in there. Um, I got more even feathers, more colors. I did blues with a pop of red and the dark navy. And I, th there's a, I think there's like a, not a turquoise, but a tropical blue, I think is what they call it. And I love it. Love these colors together. And you could swap them out if you want. You could do a, like a magenta with the blue and get something equal, or you can do a blue violet instead of the true blue. Again, once again, all the colors are listed in the description. Don't ask me which colors I'm using cause I will bap you upside the head with a cup. Just a plastic cup, not like a mug. I'm nice like that, just a plastic cup. It's gonna lunge it at your noggin. So yeah, uh, you have a lot of freedom when it comes to tilting. And I, I find the jiggle pours kind of easy to tilt because they don't need to be totally perfect, like a ring pour. You have some freedom to make some mistakes when you're tilting. So I like the negative space up there. I think for this one, I will go ahead and paint stars on this one. Little shiny stars. I won't paint eyeballs this time for people who don't like my more strange art. And if you don't like it, then why are you here? <laughs> Get out. Anyway, uh, I love this painting. Since I did put white paint on top of the navy, you could also torch it a little bit to see if any white cells pop up. I'm not gonna torch it because sometimes, sometimes torching leaves these little pinholes and I, do not prefer it. Do not recommend. This is the final product with your close up. I really like this painting. I think it's one of my best jiggle pours, so I'm pretty stoked I got it on camera. Really, really pretty. So, thank you guys so much for watching me fiddle with the camera haphazardly. I'm so happy you're here and watching. I hope you learned something. Please give the Jiggle Pour a try. You won't regret it. It's so fun and there's so many possibilities for embellishment and for all kinds of different colors and different shapes. 
highly, highly recommend you give this a shot. It's my favorite. I do a lot of jiggle pours. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.